Nruk ye hawa brakata, ye hawa sha, brakata ye hawa brakata, ye hawa sha, ba hasham, brakakodash, the bonners to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching and truth and sincerity. Lesson will be entitled, For I Must Leave to Others Everything. I repeat, for I must leave to others everything. Lord will, you are edified. Video will be used for fair use purpose only. As you can see, it's entitled Mike Epps telling y'all that your life is rented. You work to stack money for somebody else because when you die, you can't take it with you. Nothing in this life. This is a rented life. You hear me? Rent it. What you got in your pocket right now is what you own. You go. And he's absolutely right because according to the scriptures, Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits, referring to Yahweh, and live? Right? So Yahweh is the Father of spirits, and we are renting our lives from Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. I think it's another one too. <laughs> Ecclesiastes three and chapter Salaki. Ecclesiastes Chapter 3 and verse um, 20. All go into one place, so we all return to the spiritual realm after we perish or demise. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Verse 21. Who knows the spirit of man that go upward, right, upward, back into the spiritual realm, and the spirit of the beast that go downward to the earth. So when animals die, right, they come right back. But when man, woman, and child perish, we go straight into the spiritual realm to be judged. And we come back around the third and fourth generation. Or third or fourth generation. Go to the morgue, they'll put that in a property bag and get that to your family. <laughs> that means the money in the bank is a number on a piece of paper. When the bank is closed, we even. That's real. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody better than nobody on this earth. You can't take it with you. All I can buy. That's correct here because the Israelites, okay, are better than everybody. Why? Because Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has chosen that nation or our nation out of all nations on the earth so yes we are better than the other nations beginning with the elect let's go to Second Ezra is five and twenty-three, and said, "O Lord, that bear rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, you have chosen you one only vine." Verse twenty-four, 
and of all lands of the whole world, you have chosen the one pit, Jerusalem, okay, the land of Israel. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily, and of all the depths of the sea, you have filled you one river, okay, hence the Jordan River. And of all the builded cities, you have hollowed or consecrated or sanctified Zion unto yourself. Zion, okay, is another name for the nation of Israel. So, yes. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has a favorite people. Okay, and at this time frame, he's only dealing with the elect out of the nation of Israel. I is cars and shoes, a bigger house, and would I want some more ass kissers? This is what rich do. This is what money is. If you really break it down, there's nothing you can really do with it. You're just stacking it up to give it to somebody. Because if something happened to you, you're not taking it with you. So once I start thinking like that, the desire for me to chase in this business and compete <clears throat> went away. I gotta have an art with it, man. You really... And the reason why he's saying this because he has came across the prophets at least two times, right? So, with that being said, he's seen some videos. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1, and the NLT. I said to myself, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things in life, but I found that it's like it, but I found that this too was mean meaningless. So I said, Laughter is silly, what good does it do to seek pleasure? After much thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine, and while still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. And this way, I try to experience the only happiness most people find during their belief, slacky, I'm tripping, during their brief life in this world. Verse 4. I also try to find meaning by building huge homes for myself and by planting beautiful vineyards. I made gardens and parks, filling them with all kinds of fruit trees. I built reservoirs to collect the water to irrigate my many flourishing groves. I brought slaves, both men and women, and others were born into my household. I also owned large herds and flocks, more than any of the kings who had lived in Jerusalem before me. So, as you can see, that King Solomon was bawling. Okay, see, he wasn't rich. He was wealthy, right? Verse 8, I collected great sums of silver and gold, the treasure of many kings and provinces. I hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and had many beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could desire. And because of this blessing that Yahweh Bahasham, Yahushah, bestowed on Solomon. Okay, everything was accessible. And how did he get this? He sought the kingdom first, and everything was added to him, right? Verse 9, so I became greater than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, even David, and my wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure and hard work, a reward for all my labors. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. Verse 12, so I decided to compare wisdom with foolishness and madness, for who can do this better than I, the king? Verse 13, I thought wisdom is better than foolishness, just as light is better than darkness. For the wise can see where they are going, but fools walk in the dark. Yet I saw that the wise and the foolish share the same fate. Verse 15, both will die. So I said to myself, since I will end up the same as the fool, what's the value of all my wisdom? 
this is also meaningless. Verse 16, for the wise and the foolish both die. The wise will not be remembered any longer than the fool. In the days to come, both will be forgotten. Verse 17, so I came to hate life because everything done here under the sun is so troubling. Everything is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Verse 18, I came to hate all my hard work here on earth. For I must leave to others everything I have earned. Okay? So, King Solomon had everything except for eternal life. And this is what Yahweh Shah is bringing to the nation of Israel. Beginning with the elect. And all cravings, all wants, all desires... Okay, will be fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. All right, because we are going to be blessed from Yahweh through Yahweh Shah. Okay, we will be so blessed in the kingdom. All right, you regarding the one, you will not be able to finish that thought because the Most High is going to grant it to us. All right. We will never get bored in the kingdom. We will never get sick in the kingdom. We will never die in the kingdom because this is within the terms of the second covenant. Okay. Lord will you edify. Shalom.